Hello, sisters. And welcome to Coffee Tequila. Well, I'm, I'm cringing really bad right now. Do you hear a loud cringe? I, I'm, just a loud. I'm, I'm hearing sort of everyone cringe right now. Crunchy cringe just for everybody. No, yes. that was good, baby. That was a good performance. Who are you channeling? Winifred Anderson? <laughs> no, Winifred. <laughs> the, the witches are back, and we're here to run amok. Welcome to Coffee and Tequila, guys. My name is Zach. And I'm Alistair. And this episode of Coffee and Tequila is kind of being sponsored by Helix Sleep. As always, we'll let you know a little bit more about them a little bit later. We have a quick little morning show for you guys. I don't feel like this episode's going to be super long. We have our stuff covered in the background because mm. we're making our It's got to be a set. reveal. We've got to yeah. do the reveal, baby. We can't have the set all, all sticking out. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> and... Um, happy Halloween, guys. Happy, happy Halloween. We're in spooky season. Spooky season's almost over already. Where it's the crazy. hell is the year going? Because the year's almost done already, and it feels like we just moved to El Paso back in March. I feel like it, we're sliding to the end right now. And I was really excited for spooky season. And I, there was all this all this content that was announced, and we were really excited to start watching all of it. And now it's like halfway through the month already. I can't even bring myself to watch most of the stuff I've been wanting to watch, right? I know. So it's and like, it's, it's, you're trying to get yourself in the mood. Mm-hmm. So like, there's so much stuff that came out. Like uh, Midnight Club came out. Oh, and Mike I really, Flanagan. really want to support that because that it's really Heather good. Langenkamp, and I, I love her so much from Nightmare on Elm Street, Nancy. So I, I said that's really good, but I don't know. I haven't, I haven't seen it. I, I like said I've love heard her. it's really good. Um, I've been hearing it's like good, and like she's pretty good in it. And it's Mike Flanagan. You know, we love Mike Flanagan. Yes, we we do. Um, and uh, what other stuff has been coming out? Well, mm-hmm. um, interview the new interview with the vampire came out. Yes, we're going to get to our content later. Remember? Oh yeah. <laughs> So, uh, oh, well, uh, going off script. we uh, we do have like a little outline that we're trying to do. Sorry, right? he, just, I'm so sorry. I so my leading question would be, Alistair. Oh, in an organic way, let me ask you: What are your favorite comfort movies? <laughs> oh, thank you. <laughs> I, I, I fumbled the bag with that one. No, it's okay. We just um, we just changed it up like like right before we hit record. Um, so a little flustered. So there. my favorite comfort movies, mm. favorite Halloween comfort movies, yeah, that get me into the mood. Favorite one overall is uh, Practical Magic. I can watch that on repeat. Oh my goodness! I make Lord Zachary Jesus. watch it Lord so Jesus. many times every year. I have not made him watch it th- at all this year. Your birthday's so on Friday, and so. I have a feeling that that's what we're going to end up watching because I'm pretty sure, like last year, we ended up watching it. Well, for your- you know what? J- just be grateful that I didn't make it a birthday week this year. <laughs> because every year we've been together, it came upon us. It's just yeah. here. Your birthday's already here. We he's can skip it. The It'll big three O guys. Mm. He's turning thirty years old Come this on. year. Last year, you made me watch Hocus Pocus or not Hocus Pocus, uh, Practical Magic twice. Um, was it only twice? It was only twice. Was it only twice? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I'm surprised he's not putting me in a red wig and we're running around like Jillian and and, and <laughs> Sandra Bullock. What, what's her name in the movie? Uh, Jillian uh, and uh, the, Jillian and Sally. Sally. <laughs> Yes, that's what we're, we're going to get adopt a redhead cat. Uh, I mean, uh, orange cat is it orange or is it, uh, orange cat tabby cat and a black cat. And we're going to call him Jillian. The Sally, I, Sally. Dude, I'm not a cat so. guy. I'm not a cat guy. I have a question for everybody. It's kind of off. Script. Uh, yes, but if you watched his TikTok, you definitely think he was a cat guy. I cats all over my TikTok. And really. you love it. And I love I, I love the idea of a cat, right? I don't want the cat hair. I don't want the litter box. And I don't want them scratching my shit up because everybody says that the cats will scratch your shit up. We have a leather couch in there that we stupidly put too much money down on. We could have got. We're gonna have it forever. (laughs) Um, And I will not have a cat in my house destroying that couch. It's already like a few a few spots here and there, a little bit messed up. And I will not have a cat scratching that shit up. But so, a question, kind of off script. Um, We've like bounced back and forth on getting another animal. And if you if you if you keep up with the vlogs, if you're here from the vlogs, you know that we just lost Winnie last year around the same time. It was actually we've passed. Did you know? Did you did you remember that we came up to her anniversary of her passing? I I actively did not remember. I, I mean, I'm pretty I made sure myself that I, just I, like soldier through it. I, I I'm pretty sure I just I cried one day in the car when I came back from PG. It was probably around that same it was time. Probably yeah, around the same day. I I remembered the week that it was coming up, and I like threw myself into different projects because I did not want that day to come and like me to remember that day because um, it was pretty traumatic. And then uh, so like pretty quickly within within a quick span of time, we, uh, we lost Bronson. 
or a French bulldog we had and we lost a Winifred, an English bulldog we had. I will never get another fucking bulldog. Let me tell you that. I will not do it. I love well, English well, bulldogs. Well, when we I, do have Brando, who is a French yes, bulldog. Yes, 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 yes. <laughs> and, and like pray for his health and all. Um, I, I will never get another bulldog because of, because of the experiences we've had. But we lost both of them in a pretty short span of time. And I have just like, we've had conversations on and off all year about getting another one. It's just, I, I, I kind of feel emotionally exhausted at this I point. I am too. I think I am too. But I feel so awful for Brando because he's like always on us. Like always on us. He's like clinging to us and gets a lot of anxiety when we're not there. And he hasn't always been like that. It was when he became an only dog that he's been like that. And I... I'm, I'm telling you, I think that we need to take him to doggy t- daycare a mm-hmm. couple of days a week and get him more socialized. Yeah. Uh, I think, I mean, that could be a solution too. I just, I feel so awful and I want him to have like, cause Winnie was like that too, when we lost Bronson. And so we got Brando and so she does some, some, something else to cling to. And it's just like, I have so much, uh, that can't always be our solution. I have so much trauma from that, from th- that experience. And like going through a year of watching her waste away from cancer was like pretty hard, right? I don't know if well, I can, I, I, I wouldn't even say it was a year. Cause for the most part, she had a pretty good chemotherapy. Mm. Up until the end, it was just knowing that we kept on having to bring her in every time, every time. I think we had two different experiences, man. Her chemo was rough. So. Yeah, the first one was good. The second, the second one was real bad. Um, I don't want to get super sad about it. I don't want to get super sad about it. Let's let's kind of like uh, my so, point here is that we've talked about getting another one, and so I, I kind of like am putting this question out there to everybody else is like, what do you do? Like, would getting another pet be? be a good idea or because I'm one I'm super nervous I'm super paranoid that it's going to happen again that something is going to happen again because clearly we don't have the best track record with animals and I'm worried I'm fucking cursed or something like that two I don't want Brenda to feel like bad if we do get a pet and then like you know we have to give that pet attention three I don't know if I have if I emotionally because we when we got Brando I was very ready for another one right I remember being ready for another one but at this point in time, I feel completely different. I feel like I don't want to emotionally put any more. I, I I have no love to put into another animal. And I know that would change. It would get into our house, and I would, I'd like love it so much and stuff. Like that. But I'm like, it sounds exhausting. It, it? It, it is emotional, emotionally exhausting, especially with everything that's been going on. And like during this time of the year, like this is spooky season. We, we named our dog Winifred, Winifred, mm-hmm. partially after Winifred from Hocus Pocus. Partially after Winifred Burkle from Angel, and they're both kind of like supernatural stuff. And we got her, I we got her in October, didn't we? We got her, so we had, yeah, yeah, it was October. Yeah. It was like we did your birthday first, right? Yeah, we did your birthday first, and we got her like a week yeah. later, yeah. And 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 it was it, it, it was amazing, but we've always thought of her as like our fall, you know, like she was our fall girl, we, yeah, you, and we, you know, s- spooky season, whenever girl. we watch. Hocus Pocus, we, you know, the, 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 the part where she goes up on stage and she's like, hello, Salem, my name's Winifred, what's yours? And when we met her, we just like made that joke. You know how people are weird and like talk for their dogs and like have little yeah. voices for the dogs. So we would be like, hello, gays, my name's Winifred, what's yours? <laughs> and like, that's how we met her. And, and, and you know, is I don't know. I don't want to get a sad so like Yeah, we'll, I'm, I'm, we'll I'm getting a little sad. But, but, but the question is there is like, yeah. Do we get another one? Do we? And, and and right now it's like a. I mean, going back into the comfort movies, I'd say uh, <laughs> because these do make me think of Winifred because it's, it's Hocus Pocus really made me think yeah. of Winifred when we watched Hocus Pocus too, and we'll get to kind of the review part of that. But yeah, it, 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 for me as well. But I, I think like the basic ones for me are Practical Magic, mm-hmm. um, uh, Hocus Pocus, uh, the Casper. Um, not not the weird Casper with which weird Casper? I don't know. The, there's one with Wendy, Casper and Wendy. I do, Casper I meets Wendy. You're saying that's um, a weird one? Hillary Duff, dude. I I, I love Shelley Hillary Duff. Duvall. I love Hillary Duff. What are you talking um, about? I also don't like Halloween Town. You're. I... <laughs> <laughs> but Stop. I I know last year we watched. Uh, I think it was The Witches, the new one with uh, uh, Anne Hathaway. That one was okay. I think Anne Hathaway was great. She was yeah. great as a witch. I, lo- I love seeing that. Good. But but you know what was great? Great is um, um, the Witches of Eastwick was a really good one we, too. And I've we did not want to watch it. No, we didn't. And we, and we were the trailer like, was terrible. 
We'll just watch it because everybody says it's so good. Because they're like lusting over Jack Nicholson. I'm like, Jack Nicholson, great actor, but Jack Nicholson, <laughs> like that's the object of desire. But in the context of the movie, it makes a lot of sense, yes, right? So does. like, but like watching the trailer, it's like You're new like, man in town. No. All these women want him and they're all going to do spells to try to get him. <laughs> I was like, like Jack Nicholson. <laughs> <laughs> but it's really good. I would definitely it recommend is. it. I love it. Cher, um, uh, Michelle Pfeiffer, uh, Oh, I, that other woman that I've never seen in a movie. No, Susan Sarandon. Don't even. <laughs> Such a son of a bitch. You know what? Another one that people love that Susan Sarandon's in is um, the Rocky Horror Picture Show. You know, I am not a Rocky oh, Horror yeah, Picture Show Oh, yeah, that is another gay. one. Yeah. You and your sister were watching. His sister just came to visit. And your sister was. You and your sister were watching it. And I'm just not. I, I've never I been it's en- good. enchanted by it. It was c- kind of like me with Halloween Town. I watched it for the very first time in full with you. And I just like, I don't get it. I don't get it. It's not my thing. Well, I also watched The Love Witch last year. You didn't like it, though. I think we started uh, that. It was okay. Yeah. The, the Craft. Oh, The Craft is always. Always. Com- always. Always a comfort movie. Um, trick or Treat. Trick or Treat. I you love introduced me to Trick or Treat. Well, the thing is, so like with, Hall- with Spooky Season, I'm usually, so I love horror movies, right? But I'm not a big, uh, I'm not like a big horror movie fan when it comes to spooky season. Like I do love to watch Halloween and the Halloween movies. Those are the ones that I watch, but I more prefer the cozy movies, the cute cozy movies because I watch scary movies all year long, right? Yeah. So it feels more like a treat to watch the cozy movies instead of, you know, just pulling out my, my horror movies, which really disqualifies me as a horror fan. <laughs> what? But, and it's, it's funny because we said uh, um, the... The craft and then cozy because the craft really isn't a, a, a cozy movie, but I think it has the vibes, you know, yeah, that you're looking for, and I and I really appreciate that. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know, like uh, the practical magic is what I go. Back I feel to. like the, our, our cozy movie, yeah. And we, and, and, and we just watched the Covenant mm. the other day again. Holy shit! I, I like completely had blocked that movie <laughs> out, and it is like the gayest. It, is this some gay shit? Okay, it's gay. it is homo <laughs> homos all over the place. Oh, it's Spirited Away, is. and as a comfort movie for for spooky season. Yeah, or, or, it's not or, a spooky. What's the other one? Movie. Kiki's. Kiki's delivery service. delivery service. That's not a spooky season movie. Yes, it's a witch. It's a witch, but that don't it's mean a it's a spooky season movie. Uh, oh, and Twitches. I love Twitches. I do love Twitches. Yes. Disney Channel ones are really good, like Tower of Terror. Well, like Disney Channel used to have their spooky month in October, and they used to play yeah. all the really good ones. That's back then when they 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 treated little kids like we could handle some stuff, and now they're all like... Now everything's like super It's like, back, oh, oh like. the kids are going to be damaged by this one. We better take Tower of Terror off of the Disney Channel. Don't show it anymore. Mm-hmm. Don't let these kids see these movies, right? Everything... Include a song. You need to include a musical well, it's number. It's weird to even look back at that because there's a lot of adult themes yeah. in child, child, children's movies that children aren't going to pick up on, but that I solely believe are there so that adults are also entertained by whatever's going on. Mm-hmm. So I think so. I don't know. I don't have a lot of like cozy movies for I think, Spooky I, Season, I, but I, I, but think, I, I like we do mine. because we t- we, we've talked about it. Yeah. Um, like all of our, our, our cozy Spooky Season movies. Mm-hmm. What are you guys' favorite cozy spooky season movies? We we have like a bunch of cookies and milk in the in the refrigerator too that we need to crack open and get rid of because I don't want them in my house. They're too they're too tempting. Um, so we're probably gonna watch Practical Magic and do that. We'll have to. Why? No, his birthday is is during spooky season, and I've always been so jealous about that because I would love a spooky season birthday. And so one year I did Harry Potter. You remember I did a Harry Potter like little party for you. I decorated the entire thing like the what what is it called the Hogwarts, uh, like the uh, uh, like Hogwarts the dining house hall thing table yeah yeah I don't know it was like that and then my goddess like robes and shit like that I mean I haven't really talked before about before Harry Potter was canceled <laughs> yeah I haven't really talked about Harry Potter since it's been kind of mm, we'll get to it yeah but so. then last year we did. A practical magic party. I had you like go out, and you came back. Oh, and yeah. He always gets like the spooky season set up for his little birthday things. And well, you know what I get? Here's a case of beer, Zach. Happy Fourth of July. <laughs> Happy Fourth of July. <laughs> America, America, party time! Excellent. Uh, <laughs> when we come back, we'll get into a couple hot topics, and we'll talk about Hocus Pocus two and the sexy and very very homosexual interview with the vampire we'll see all in a minute let's just go into the break 
Yep. We're doing this. We're rolling. I'm, I'm, I don't even think we'll have to have to cut any of this. I love it. Lo- I love it too. Love a smooth edit. <laughs> uh, this episode is kindly being sponsored by Helix Sleep. As always, we love our Helix Sleep mattresses. We actually just got our king size Helix Sleep mattress back into the house. We're gonna sleep on it tonight. Did we get the sheets? Did we get the comforter? We did not, did you not? Oh, we we went to the apartment tonight. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we did not get all of our stuff, but we slept in there. We slept back at the apartment the other night on our uh, king size helix sleep mattress and we uh, we also have like sheets from helix as well and we freaking crashed man those sheets are like yeah. so breathable and honestly they're the coolest sheets we have yeah so i keep on begging you to buy more sheets of those sheets because i i will literally wash those sheets mm-hmm. wait for everything to dry and then put them back on the bed he'll put them back on the bed before damp, damp. before putting other uh, other unbreathable sheets onto that bed. Now it's time to tell y'all a little bit about our sponsor for today's episode, Helix Sleep. Helix is a premium mattress and a box company that makes beds to fit your unique sleep style. Helix knows that everybody is different and everybody has their own unique needs, and so they've made a sleep quiz that'll match you with your perfect mattress based on your needs. I am an all-over sleeper. Alistair is more of a side sleeper. He likes a firm mattress. I like, uh, you know, more medium. We took the quiz together and we got the Midnight Mattress. And one of the best parts about Helix is that they deliver the mattress right to your door for free. It comes rolled up in a box and is super easy to set up yourself. And if it makes you nervous to buy something online that you haven't tried, Helix has a 100 night sleep trial so you get more than 3 months to make sure that you absolutely love it. And if you don't, they'll pick it up for you and you'll get a full refund. Well, if you or somebody you know is in the market for a new mattress and you think that Helix sounds right for you, you can go to helixsleep.com slash tequila where you can get up to $200 off of your mattress. And two free pillows. There was a uh, there's a woman in Texas who does not have super nice things to say about the Hocus Pocus movie. So we're going to watch that clip real quick. It's super short, too. So, you ready? Let's see what she has to say. A worst case scenario is that you unleash hell on your kids. This time of year, fall harvest is heavily celebrated in their household, but Halloween is not. It grieves me, the thought of exposing our kids to darkness. Gooch says there's a spiritual war being waged against We can't make fun of names. Come on, we're going to be mature on this. Hollywood is part of the problem, and right now, one film in particular. The whole movie is based on witches harvesting children for blood sacrifices. In a recent Facebook post, Gooch advises moms against letting their kids watch Hocus Pocus 2. I believe whatever comes in our TV screens, there are things attached to that. I've seen for myself the things that I've watched with my eyes or heard over a TV screen, they become manifested in in real life. Everybody thinks it's fake and innocent, but they could be casting any type of spell that they want to. Anything could be coming. Close up on Winifred freaking Sanderson. <laughs> what was that Facebook group a while ago? Is it still going? Like Moms Against Things on TV? Is that what, that's yeah, not I, what it's called? But it's like, did you we know like join it? About, right? Did we join it? Or, or were we just seeing people who joined it? I don't I remember. Don't, I don't know. I could see my mom joining it to go and argue with people. I, she I, likes I, to do I, that. I could, see, I, could, I could see you're doing that too. Um, no, that's uh, you know, It's what? an opinion. It is an opinion. It's an opinion. You know what? I, yeah. If, if you believe that things that come on TV will come on you, you know what? Raise raise your kids however you're going to raise them. Yeah. They're probably going to watch Hocus Pocus anyways. They're going to go to a friend's, friend's house, house and watch Hocus Pocus too, they're, right? They're going to be like, oh my gosh, this is so titillating. I know. And it's only going to be titillating because they weren't allowed to watch it at their house. Right? <laughs> yeah. like, I watched, I, I, I'm so desensitized to everything because I was allowed to watch whatever I wanted, except for like the rare occurrence that I'll, like they would decide, my parents would decide all of a sudden I couldn't watch something. And then that would be like the titillating piece of like, like Brokeback Mountain for some reason. Now I know why. It's probably <laughs> because I'm like a, a homosexual and they're like, we don't want him to be exposed to the homosexuals. But I wasn't allowed to watch Birds of Homosexual. And so I used to like sneak the DVD in, right? And I'd watch it and I'd be like, oh. <laughs> He'd be like what's going on here? <laughs> I didn't even watch it in full until I was in my adult years. I watched it in full with you, I think. Jack Nasty. Jack Nasty. <laughs> Jack Twist. Oh my God. I think Jack you watched Nasty. It. I remember I was actually watching that. On we the, watched it for yeah. the first time together. To get, and, in and, Atlanta, and, and, and yeah. It's corny. It, it is. is corny. It's good, though. It's good. <laughs> Bring it back to our point, though. Um, I don't know, man. You know, I I'm I've been long been on a uh, sort of a spiritual journey of my own, um, going through my uh, I don't know. I think when I started YouTube, I said, you know, I'm a Christian. I believe in God. I, I you know, 
Faith is very important to me, and a faith is very important to me today, if I were to re-answer that question. Faith is very important to me today, and my relationship with God is my own. But um, I think religion is 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 a very dangerous thing i am like i've seen it more and more and more organized religion is a very dangerous thing and we have people like this who like truly believe these things right it's not like you can fault them for just creating something to like fear monger right i don't believe I, don't, I really don't believe that's like a fear mongering thing it is fear mongering but i don't believe it's just like manifested created fear mongering out of like nothing just pulled out of thin air they believe this stuff well, yeah, you know? and so they're going to scare their own children by this. Like the spells are coming through your TV, little Johnny. Don't let the spells get you. You know, putting fear into their kids, and I feel like that's more dangerous than freaking hocus, hocus pocus do. Well, it's also like, a, and, and, and I, I, want, I want to be respectful by the way I, I talk about this because I know. Oh, we, you can. I don't have to. I, I know we have several Christians uh, who listen to us, mm -hmm. but. Uh, for, for me, especially with, with what just came out with uh, Jeffrey Dahmer and his show, and then you have people well, saying— now I see why you're trying to be respectful. Where are we going with De Jeffrey Dahmer? Well, well, uh, <laughs> well, 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 people saying, well, he's a brother in Christ because uh, he, you know, gave himself to Christ— you know, are uh, people I, saying that? Yes. Oh, I didn't know. And they're saying that about like, uh, like it, 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 on TikTok about like serial killers and stuff, which makes me think like you have these gay people who are just going to go to hell, and then you have these you know cannibal serial killers going to heaven. I'm sorry, but heaven doesn't sound like a good place right now. <laughs> like, like I don't know with that logic, right? Yeah. You know, it's it's. Uh, I don't freaking know, man. I don't know. I think worry about your own relationship with God, but like this uh, th th this whole thing. About Hocus Pocus 2, this movie that's on freaking Disney Plus. I will say, while I was watching it, they were doing a lot of spells, and I wasn't sure if they were aiming them at me. You know, it's just a copa de Malica Mystica. I'm like, what the fuck are you doing to me? Am I gonna? I don't. Don't turn me straight, please. I don't want to. We practice it so many times. No, it's a freaking kids movie, right? It's not even like I was listening to a podcast called The Fear Queers, and they were talking about Hocus Pocus 2. And the Hocus Pocus 2 movie, they they made a really good point, and it's like. Why can they not make kids' movies that, like, have scary stuff in them anymore? Because I do have to agree that this Hocus Pocus 2 movie was not nearly as scary as the original one. I when you think of scary at all. Really. It wasn't scary at all. Yeah. It was just a great time watching these three, like, return as their characters. That was the big draw for me, and that's what kept me interested and made me watch it, I guess, four times that we did it. Um... <laughs> But like yeah. in the original one, like think about it, like right, like they're they're on stage and they're performing to put a spell on all of these parents, and these kids are like asking for help from these adults, and none of the they're adults like, can help. Listen to us, listen to us, listen and to us. And nobody can help. And that's terrifying, right? Yeah. Um, but we don't really have stuff like that in this, right? It is a much more watered down, tame version. So how anybody can look at this, and I don't believe the lady even looked at it, right? It's people condemning stuff like this, yeah. but they're just they're not even going to watch it. Um, so we can kind of move into the review of it. I thought it was freaking fun. I, I we so had good. a fun time. Yeah. Uh, I d definitely don't think it's, it is on par with the cult classic first movie, mm -hmm. but I loved revisiting the characters. I loved all of their performances. It was spectacular. I think the just the Sarah Jessica Parker, Catherine and Jimmy, and, and Bette Midler are so fun, right? As yes. these characters, because I'm not a huge. I'm a big Sarah Jessica Parker fan, but like Catherine, Catherine and Jimmy, and and Bette Midler. Outside of this, I'm not big. You know, I, I'm not too familiar. Like I know that they who they are. Yeah, I mean, but I'm they, like they, they're, they're pretty prevalent. I think across like their own bodies of work. Well, gays love Bette Midler, but like Bette Midler to me is Winifred Sanderson, right? Like I don't yeah. really know her outside of that. Um, but then you're just like, I just need a third freaking movie. I was so in love with this movie. And I think it was just because of them, right? Because like yeah. plot wise, there's so many, there's so much that I just didn't understand that was going on. Like at one point, the, the, the new kids are driving a bus, but like it doesn't play in the bus. It it's doesn't like play. A trolley bus? It does, yeah, how do they get the bus? And it doesn't play into the into the movie at all. We don't get like a scene. I, I was expecting that to set up like a scene where they have like a fight on the bus, or like the bus crashes or like through something, or like or, yeah. something that's useful in the plot. And it really goes nowhere. It just seems like to be like an Easter egg that kind of calls back to the first one. But well, yes, and I, I I think there was excellent writing in this one. I think yeah. that some of the plotting was weird because I feel like they cut out some scenes. It felt the like teenagers. there were tons of scenes. Like I, there was a huge handful. Yeah. Yeah. I, and I, I think of the teenagers. And you know what? I'm not upset about it because my only.
biggest cri- my biggest critique about this movie, which I don't, I love this movie. I really loved it. Yeah. My biggest critique w- were that the teenagers were very interesting. I don't think they were very interesting either. Or it's, funny. It, it felt like they were being set up to like get a spinoff or something like that. Like they were yeah. going to set up. And I would rather not have a spinoff. Well, yeah, because like, I didn't I fall in love with just, them as no. characters. Like I, they're fine. If they're, they're fine. If they're in the second one, they're fine. Cool. But let's spice up their their, their script a little I bit. I want a third yeah. movie with these ladies, right? There are three sisters. There should be three movies. I think the next movie needs to be like this. Because um, this, this, we now have, like a, I guess, a new coven of witches. Like yes. a, new, a new Power of Three will set us free girls, you know? Yeah, um, three. And I would love for the main one of that to either go evil or all three of them go evil, right? And then, like, the characters from the original movie have to bring the Sanderson sisters back somehow to come back, and they all have to, like, take down this, like, new, high, like, supreme witch, you know? And I think that would be really fun. And then at the end, they get to live, okay? They don't have to disappeared to dust anymore well um, you know what disney messed up the last three last star wars trilogy this is the way they can make up for god it. please don't let kathleen kennedy on this don't <laughs> no. let her do it <laughs> i don't think anybody's thinking about hocus pocus <laughs> three the last <laughs> kathleen kennedy the last uh, the return of the sanderson <laughs> the last sanderson. <laughs> the, the return of the sanderson <laughs> the last sanderson no. not loving it honestly um, we, oh, it was, it was, it was such think, a fun time. Do you think time. it was a good movie or do you think it was like, like if we had never seen the first one, do you think we would like it? I don't know. I think so. Um, maybe I don't, mm, cause I it don't absolutely know. is like our love for these characters. It's, that it's was, an that event was so movie wonderful. for us. I feel yeah. like it, it felt like an event watching it, uh, together. There's and, a, and yeah. Yeah. Mm. What was that? There's a scene. I'm trying to let you speak more, so I don't get called out in the comments for interrupting you all the time. I am trying with that very hard. Do you really get called I just out like, for interrupting? Oh yes, me? and it, I should. I should because it's a very horrible habit that I have. But I really like. I get so excited. I just start speaking over people. Um, have you made your point? I can. <laughs> I I don't, you, you interrupted me, so I forget what I was about to say. <laughs> You interrupted me. You son of a bitch. You, you, you literally interrupted me. Said, I'm so sorry for interrupting you. Um, I've been told that I've been interrupting you. I'm really trying to improve it. And then just ca- kept just Inciting talking about it. violence on so me. You, you, on you, me. You interrupted me. How dare and you. And then use that opportunity <laughs> to have your whole dialogue. To make it about so, me to center myself. Yes. In the conversation. Um, well, there, there's, a, there's a scene... <laughs> <laughs> with it, when the Sanderson sisters first come back, um, they, there's a scene in the Walgreens, and it is so fucking funny. And this, so this scene was supposed to be in the original one, right? And they brought it back for this one because it just got cut out of the original one, and it is so hilarious. I, I could have watched the entire movie in that damn Walgreens. It is so funny, and it really highlights like how great. <laughs> it's the face of a child. <laughs> And it just highlights like how great they are, right? And I love that. I just, I just love them together, and I think that's why I love the movie so much. Um, well, I, I always appreciate the opportunity to revisit loved characters, yes, later on in life or later on in their storyline. Mm. Um, and a lot of people are critique critique now the all the reboots that are going on. Yeah, but you know what. Oh, I love I the reboot. I would love to have a charm reboot with all four sisters. I don't know. Mm, if that, would, that would never get happen. Crazy. Okay. <laughs> look at what the shit that happens in that damn show. They die every other episode. Okay. <laughs> they can bring Prue back. <laughs> they should. Um, and it, it, I'd, I'd love to have a, a Buffy back. I'd love to, yeah. you, you know, have, you know, X Files came back. Well, I agree with you. Stuff. I think like, X Files is the one who did it right. Whether you, uh, whether you think the, the, re, you know, the, are they reboots? I don't understand reboots. And, I, 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 and, so, and so, sorry, that's a uh, revival. 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 Sorry. So like X File. I don't. I, I whether the revival was good here is neither here or there. I think they just did it so well in that you take a property and instead of like your series finale being an end all be all and like something you can't come back from, right? Like Dexter. <laughs> um, you just like. Except that, like, hey, maybe, and, like, people weren't thinking about this back then, right? But, like, you know, take your story and be like, okay, well, we're ending the story now, but we could always come back later, right? We could just, we're taking a break. We're not just ending the story. We're taking a break. And I love that approach much more than, like, 
okay, Hocus Pocus, dude, this will be the final Hocus Pocus. Or like, and nobody's really saying that, but it's, you know. I, and, and we're no longer in the 22 episode, uh, like, oh, time frame anymore. Thank Jesus. So these actors can come back, do like a 6 two ten, you know, episode, and just do whatever they want. With Who are you talking about, Bubby? Yes. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's great, and I want Hocus Pocus 3 back. Um, I, I want it. I don't know, like, how willing the the, the actresses will be to do it as they get older. So maybe they need to do it a little quicker, but like look at the first one between the first one. And now that's a long stretch of time and it still worked. And I think like the other movies, other shows, all of that needs to be in on that. Yeah, you saw that interview with all, all three of them where they were talking about doing a third one and Bette Midler and, uh, Oh, I did see that. Catherine and Jimmy were like, no, we, we, we close it out. And Sarah Jessica Parker was like, no, um, uh, like my my relatives told me that it looked like it was open for a third one, and they and, and then Catherine and Jimmy they don't know like, what the hell's going on. Yeah, with well, this Catherine movie. and Jimmy, like, and I Jimmy was like, "Well, I said bye bye," and so Jessica Parker was like, "You did that in the first <laughs> movie too, and we're here twenty nine years later." <laughs> That's very true. <laughs> a couple years ago, Sarah Jessica Parker was on a talk show and she said that I don't even remember what the movie was about. The first one, um, I just know that I was on a harness and flying a lot, and I, was, <laughs> I think I was a little ditzy. Her wig very much bothered me. I feel like it was very homophobic. Her wig, it was not. I, I, I think all their hair wasn't. Up to par. It's okay. It was hers that really bothered me, though. Yeah. It was like a center, a center part, and it looked like a wig, and it just wasn't Sarah Jessica Parker. It was not Sarah Sanderson's wig. Okay, I'm gonna start a cancellation movement for that. I think that's deserving of cancellation. Get it, get the next wig. So, um, in conclusion, Hocus Pocus two, <laughs> good movie, go watch, bad yeah. wigs. It was also like <laughs> I think it was it was Disney Plus's highest streamed movie. Was it? I think so. I, tried I believe to look so. That up, I think I the couldn't... numbers were like, or at least for like a release or some some. There's always technicalities, oh. right? You know what, what needs to be talked about though is how is the reason why Kenny Ortega didn't come back to Hocus Pocus two. I need to know all of the shit on that. Apparently, he doesn't have a very good relationship with Disney anymore. There were so I've heard from certain people. I haven't even fact checked it, but I need to do the deep dive on that because I think what the movie was missing. Was Kenny Ortega? And I, I just All of that. checked for you. Mm -hmm. uh, Hocus Pocus two attained the most views for a streaming original film in twenty twenty two. Ooh, look at that! You know, it's another um, another show that's doing real well. I don't know if it's doing real well in viewership, but uh, Interview with the Vampire, everybody's oh loving gosh. it. It's like got like ninety percent. Like it's, it's like, doing it's, critically, yeah, it's, it's doing real well. Ninety three percent on IMDb mm -hmm. got kind of review bombed a little bit. It's a did 6. that one? 5. That one did. Yeah. So it's mostly. Because I went through it to see if it was like racially motivated or homophobically uh, mo motivated. Both of them. <laughs> but um, for the most part, it just seemed people who, uh, well, may, uh, it probably was a little bit, honestly. Well, uh, and everybody was like, this is not how the book was. This is not how the book was. But I love the reframing of, uh, well, because we already got that story in the first interview with a vampire. I love them reframing their story in this context. Well, I don't. We did get the book, and we were, we started listening to it in the car on a road trip one time, and then we like stopped as soon as we got home. So I don't think we listened to all that much yeah. of it. So I don't know the book versus the movie, and I can't tell you like how accurate the original movie was to that or anything like that. And I can't really speak on the book's relation to this series. Um, I think that is an episode we should do. I would love to do like a book versus movie or versus TV show adaptation That'd be cool. episode. I think that would be real cool. But like the show is just good. I just think the show's good, right? It's good, and it's it's surprising because I saw a couple of y'all's – the only reason we watched it is because yeah. a couple of y'all commented on our last video. I think it was our last one that we need to watch it. And I think I also – I got tagged so somewhere on gay. Twitter. And they, everybody was like, it's so gay. And I didn't, I was like, okay, it's good. They're just going to like. Oh, I didn't it, expect it. I didn't, I didn't expect, expect it to be gay, gay. Right. Yes. The faggotry like, is on another level in the show. Yes. They're and doing I'm the I'm loving thing. it. I'm loving it, honestly. We don't have any rooming or like blowjobs, though. We could do a couple with a couple of those. The okay, vampires. Okay. Be happy with what you have, Zachary. Just be happy with what we have, right? Yes. And we, it, get, we get some butt shots. I'm a, I, I'm enjoying each of and every single one of these episodes, and I'm looking forward to every Sunday when they come out. Yeah, because um, I knew that watching them, Louis and Lestat are supposed to, in the book they're gay, right? Like explicitly gay. They're is that how it is? I, I, I'm pretty sure they're not. I, I don't know. I can't say with any uh, like veracity. I guess 
uh, that they are or not, but I, I know that they're presented as in a couple. Well, in the movie, in the original movie, it's very obvious, right? Like two two men with you their daughter. You think it's obvious, but I'm sure a lot of straight people Two think, vampire queers with their daughters, okay? You know, <laughs> think it's, it's not, so. <laughs> they even get a fag hag to take care of the daughter at some point, you know? Though the movie, the, the, it is very homoerotic, yeah. but never, like, reaches a very line homo. Very homoerotic. I it's homoerotic, but not homo. The part you know? we did read up to was... Um, he had just turned Louis, right? Yeah, and like that was it was very homoerotic in that. Yeah. Um, but this movie is like outright gay. Like they're living together. They they don't share coffins. They, they do sometimes not share sleep coffins. in the same coffin, but they have their own coffins. I like that idea. We need our own coffins. I, I I would do a coffin, a single coffin, or like two different coffins, like two a temperature ones? controlled coffin. Yeah, it's just gay, and I love that they're just, like, out there being gay. We say all the time we just want more gay content where they just, like, center the gay people and, like, say that they're gay, and this is doing it, you know? And yeah. So, bravo. And it's just, like, it's not even that. That's not even the reason that I'm, like, singing this this show's praises. It's a fucking good show. Like, it is good. It's it is. made it's really well. well. Made. The camera work is really well. The sets don't look like all green screen. If they are, it's it's full of my blind ass. It, 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 uh, for me, it looks like they put money into it. It does. It and, does on AMC um, nonetheless. And on AMC, and so like, I, apparently there's like a lot of good shows on AMC that I I had no idea about. The Walking Dead, so, baby. So so we got uh, we just added it to our Prime just for this. I know um, we did the seven day trial, but we're gonna have to keep up with this. Yeah, we, yeah, show, yeah, yeah, we? yeah, we're gonna keep up with it. So if anybody's looking for how you can stream it. We did ours on Prime. Yeah. yeah. It's well worth the watch. I want to do a longer episode on it, so I don't want to talk too much about it, but it's fucking good. It's just a good show. I did. You know what? I, 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 it's hilarious to me that we started this. I was like, oh, we're just going to have a little cute little... A li- cute little chat. A short chat. chat. We're going to do a short chat. an hour guys. and a half have, or something. Oh, Lord Jesus. I'm so sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I hope we got you to work. <laughs> it's just fun talking with you, baby. It was good. It I enjoyed good. chatting with you. Yeah. You're cute. Yeah, we're, You're nice to sit across the room. You're nice to look at. Should we suck each other's blood? Okay. Anyway, and on that note, do a little bit of second. All right, guys. Um, thank you guys so much for watching. Excuse if me. you would like to support this show, yeah, uh, please uh, like and comment on YouTube, um, and on podcasting platforms. Please leave us a five star if you think we deserve it, and a uh, comment. If I don't you think like. if you think we deserve it, I think we deserve it. I think you should just do it anyway. Just do it. Give it to us. Do. Oh, we also have Instagram. Now, uh, and we have uh, TikTok. A, all the if things. If you want to follow us on those, yeah. sometimes we might have like a little TikTok that that has nothing to do with the the, the show we did. I it's don't just know. like a fun it's TikTok. Just, it's just there. We're we're on the, yeah. we're on the internet. Because we are we, on the we nets. have to be. Yes. <laughs> um, thank you so much. Uh, should we go as vampires for Halloween again this year? We've That's done it every we've single done. year. Every year we talk about like what we're gonna do. It's the easiest fucking costume uh, we can get. Okay, we can go to the spirit of Halloween. We can get those to teeth that mold into your teeth, and it's just the easiest costume it, that we can do. And it's what we do every single year. So we need costume ideas, guys. Costume ideas for our Halloween episode this year. But not too expensive. <laughs> I don't know. This set's very expensive to build. All right, guys. We will talk to you next time. Thank you so much for listening. We will see you next time. Bye.